My name is Aaron Smith-Levin, and I was a Scientologist for about 29 years. My name is Claire Headley, and I was a Scientologist for 30 years. My name is Mark Headley, and I was a Scientologist for 25 years. My name is Mike Rinda. I was a Scientologist for 46 years. What's the Church of Scientology so afraid of? This, this is, is SPTV. Welcome back for some more SPTV. I have with me Mike Rinder. Well, uh, thanks Hi. for having this chat with me, Mike. Of course. Of course. So, so uh, we want to chat about Scientology Private Investigators. Um, I published a video this morning. I know you've already seen it because I sent it to you instantly. <laughs> of David Miscavige making my greatest wish come true. I feel like I can make a wish child today. Yes. Um, I've always wanted to bust a Scientology PI. I've never been convinced that they were actually surveilling me, despite some evidence to the contrary. I I'm always so skeptical. I'm like, there, that's not really happening, right? <laughs> right. Um, I would found out this was happening for months and months and months. Anyway, I finally busted the guy. And I wanted to ask you some of the questions that people have been asking me, which is like, what on earth uh, does Scientology think it's accomplishing by having this guy just keep tabs on me? Uh, could they possibly really <laughs> still think they could be in intimidating me at this point? Um, help us understand a little bit about what, what the hell the rationale is for this. Okay. Um, honestly, there's not a whole lot of rationale. What this is a reflection of is Miscavige yelling and screaming, who's doing anything about that motherfucker, Aaron Smith Levin? What, you know, oh, so why are you so in incompetent and incapable of getting rid of this attacker? You've got to do something. You better get active. And they don't have much that they can do. So they send out their trolls on Twitter and social media. They call up to get new POW videos done saying that you're a, an evil, you know, deviant monster. And they send a PI out there with the idea that they can report back that we know is every movement. We know exactly where he's going. We know exactly what he's doing. We know who's coming to visit him. Um, and there is a sort of secondary purpose to all of that stuff, Aaron, which is to sort of let people who are still in the bubble know that they, this could all happen to them very easily if they step away and start speaking up about things that they may know. And this is, you know, uh, valuable, valuable um, in their minds for people like Angie Blankenship, who doesn't want to get this sort of scrutiny on her life and doesn't want to have the, the smearing shit on the internet and the videos done by the people that worked with her. And so it's, it's a constant reminder to everybody who hasn't spoken out, careful, watch out. Mm -hmm. Even though it has no impact on you, it, it serves two purposes, being able to say, look, this is all we're doing, and... Other people, watch your step. Right. People who have seen some of the Scientology documentaries that are out there and the Aftermath show mm -hmm. may be familiar with the idea of what Scientology calls a loud investigation. Noisy. Where noisy investigation. They're, they're very in your face. They're very overt. It's really more mm -hmm. uh, a, a harassment. You know, they're, they're knocking on your neighbor's doors and everything. I would yeah. have to say that what they're doing right now is not – a noisy investigation like well uh, it, it is aaron because your neighbors know about it they do yes they're the ones right. that are calling you up saying that these guys are out there like that mm. I, I mean the effect of that ultimately in, in the minds of scientology and osa is that perhaps they can get your neighbors so up in arms that they start demanding why don't you get what aaron why don't you just move somewhere else why don't you get our neighborhood back to the peaceful, quiet place that it used to be and get the Scientologists the fuck out of our lives? And, you know, as nutty as that is, Aaron, 
that sort of think is what motivates these sort of actions. And, you know, you talk about a noisy investigation. Hubbard says the very act of conducting such an investigation can and usually will result in the attacker folding up and going away. And they believe that. Right. Interesting. So even the neighbors who for now are like, hey, we spotted another one, like they seem to be on the team. Scientology could really just be sitting there and, and going, yeah, that's how they feel for now. Let's see how they feel a year from now. Exactly. Exactly. Right, right. And, right. you know, they've got unlimited money. And, I mean, they can keep doing this forever because it's justified by Hubbard policy. So, you know, they go, well, you know, maybe this will work. Maybe we'll get someone to turn. Maybe we'll get someone to come to us and say, what do we need to do to end this, this garbage that's happening in our neighborhood now? Amazing. I did not think of that. Um, wow. Yeah, because if I was my neighbor, I'd be really sick and tired of this strange truck parking in front of my house every day, except I'd start getting creative with it. I'd start <laughs> putting signs out front with a big arrow saying, Scientology private investigator right here. I'd put like... I'd put a live cam up there and just stream it 24 seven on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, I almost am going to encourage my neighbors to do that. I'll be like, Hey, create a YouTube channel. We'll call it Scientology PI live stream 24 seven. You know, well, or, or one of those um, trail cameras where motion activated. Yeah. So yeah. Time, yeah. A deer, they... a deer looker. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, <sighs> There was a follow-up I was going to ask you there. I've already been contacted by someone who actually personally knows the private investigator, knows who they are, has their phone number and their address. And it turns out it is a local guy. What, what would happen when you were, when you were working for Scientology, handling all the PI stuff, if a guy's, if a PI's face and identity was revealed to the public and he was revealed to be working for Scientology, uh, would he be instantly let go or cut loose? Has he lost his value or it doesn't matter? It, it depends on whether he wants to keep doing it. Yeah, it's it's mostly the latter, Aaron. Um, some of them, some of them would say, I'm not doing this anymore because I don't want to be on YouTube. Mm. Like it's there. But, you know, Scientology doesn't really care. A noisy investigation where you have PIs just sitting outside your house in a car is the purpose of it is to be visible. So they don't really care if the, if you know who this guy is, the, the guy might care though. He may be very concerned about that. Like this is going to ruin my reputation with all my friends who now they find out I'm working for Scientology. You know, right. that's not a good thing in Pinellas County. That's a really good point. And his number is a 727 number. He's definitely a local. Um, his yeah. name is Don in case. I'm not going to say his last name yet because I'm going to check with some people. Is there anything? <clears throat> so, so he's a public guy doing legally protected work on public grounds. Am I crossing a line if I make his identity known? No. Why? No, he I'm just a, asking. I don't know. No, no. You're, you're a public person on public grounds. Like he's, he's there. Uh, wh what's he going to do? Sue you for invasion of privacy when he's sitting outside your house <laughs> surveilling you? <laughs> Not a chance. Yeah, that's a good point. So let me show you something. I, um, Watch this... his fingers. He'll go mute in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to play this video with sound off. I just want to <laughs> show you something. Hold on. I do want to go full screen on this if I can. There we go. I did manage to get him to, to roll down, down his, his window. window and speak to me. Is that a huge no-no? Yeah, that's really <laughs> stupid. Like, I've got tons of videos of PIs that sit there and hold paper over their faces and turn away and, like, put up, like, the screen, you know, the sun shield screens and one wearing a hockey mask and all sorts of stuff because they don't want their picture. See, this is the problem for this guy is he's very recognizable. So his friends are going to know who he is. Obviously, someone who knows him already contacted you. He's going to be like, 
he's not going to be able to walk into a bar tonight with his buds and not have them say, what the fuck are you doing working for Scientology? Right. That's a really, really good point. Uh, Mike, what is it with PIs and them having this little bud in their ears? Like, why don't they have Bluetooth? I don't get it. Is that a walkie talkie or is that a phone or what? Um, I don't know. I mean, okay. I guess that that's probably connected to a phone and I, he's probably just old. <laughs> <laughs> cause I'll tell you, I, I, at first I mean, I immediately ruled out the idea of it being a walkie talkie cause that's just too old school. What it did make me wonder is if he's on the phone with another PI in the area, probably right. very likely, right. very likely he is on in constant communication with someone whether it's the you know chief pi or whether it's ben shaw over there in osa asking him what's going on like when he saw you driving up he obviously knew that it was you coming down the street mm -hmm. like he's you were you were approaching him directly so he was there to watch you. He saw you drive out of your driveway and drive towards his car. He probably got on the phone and said, he's moving. He didn't expect you to stop. <laughs> like I said, next time, drive over to the other side and pull up literally alongside him and roll down your window and start banging on his window from there because then he can't get away. <laughs> Some people have told me that if I position my car uh in a way that prevents him from legally moving his car that i might be in violation of some of some law i'm sure that's true but if you just <laughs> happen to yeah but what are the, what are the cops gonna do you pull up and say hey man wind down your window who are you why are you following me and you don't even get out of your vehicle you're just literally asking him a question Nobody yeah. can claim that you were deliberately preventing him from, you know, access to the highway or something. That would be <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Right, 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 right. And if he said, I've got to, you know, I'm leaving, you're blocking me, you just drive away. That's all right. So the other question I have, honestly, is, and this is why I'm always so skeptical that this is ever happening to me, Yeah, is like, you live 20 minutes north of me. Right. You haven't seen any evidence of, of PIs surveilling you or following you in quite some time that, that I'm aware of. Why in the hell are they worrying about me? Is it, it can't just be the stupid YouTube channel. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's the stupid YouTube channel. <laughs> but, but remember, Aaron, the other thing is Mr. Mickey Witz is in town. You could drive down... Like, if he is driving from the Hacienda to the Fort Harrison or to the SP building, yes, you could intercept him, so they need to know where you are at all times. Yes, that's what it is. That's what it is. They just need to know that I'm not parked outside the superpower building waiting for Miscavige to pull up. Right, or the Hacienda waiting for, the, for him to come out the gate or through the gate. Right. So that's, I mean... This was standard operating procedure back when Minton was in town. Oh, my God. I was the guy that had to take the phone calls from either Larice or Dave. Okay, so where's Minton? And if I didn't know where Minton was when they were ready to leave the Hacienda, it was like huge, huge flap. I and it. I'd be in deep shit getting sec checked like within 30 minutes because they didn't know, and so COB was not able to go to post, you know, wow. at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow, wow, wow. So is it illegal to place tracking devices on someone's vehicle? Absolutely. Okay, even if you're a licensed private investigator? Absolutely. Okay. Is it illegal to <clears throat> tap someone's phone? Absolutely. I see. Do you suspect that Scientology is has gotten into a cautious frame of mind where they're not willing to push those boundaries, or what are your thoughts? Um, <clears throat> I would think so. Mm -hmm. I would think that they are concerned about getting caught on that sort of stuff. I'm not so sure about hacking mm -hmm. because hacking is much more difficult and even though, you know, one of the PIs was convicted of hacking me and Ortega and went to federal prison for it, 
Um, that's a that's an easier thing to accomplish, especially when you've got like one of the world's leading cybersecurity companies owned by Stu Salmon in downtown Clearwater, um, hiring, you know, Kevin Mitnick. Yeah. <laughs> like the biggest hackers in the world have been in that building working for no before. So right. I'm not, I'm not so convinced about that. Hacking a cell phone is really hard. Ha right. Hacking a cell phone, locating a cell phone is not so hard, you know, because of GPS. I don't know, you, you know, after it was exposed on the aftermath by one of the PIs that was there saying that she put tracking devices on my cars. I suspect that they probably are a little worried about that subsequently. Very interesting. I recently watched an interview on the YouTube channel called Soft White Underbelly. It's an interview from a few years ago um, of a hacker named uh, Gummo, G-U-M-M-O. And it was incredible interview where the guy at the end is just like people have this idea that there's such a thing as privacy but based on the microchips in your phones uh, there's no such thing there's just no such thing and anyone who really wants to get any information about you including listening to all your conversations live if they really wanted to they can and I, when i hear things like that I, I i sort of go yes if you're a state actor you can but if you're just a pi but again you, you I'm very quick to dismiss the possibility of these things. And that's why I wanted to get your take on it. Like how we say all the time, Scientology is all the time and the money in the world. So why wouldn't they spend the money necessary to get the same access that a state actor could get if they really I, do? I'm, I, I'm not sure that they, that they don't. Mm. Um, I only suspect that they don't, you know, I just answer your question. Do you, do you think they're still doing it? I don't think so doesn't mean that they're not and doesn't yeah. mean that they couldn't i'm not sure that the upside to that is is worth the potential downside i, know. I mean there's I did, not I... you're not going to get a whole lot of information out of it it does crack me up the idea if there's been like a thousand dollars a day and they're like well today aaron told his wife they needed toilet paper from the store <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he went and picked up his daughter at school <laughs> and uh he went across the park and he did a youtube video and goliath was out and <laughs> that's the report for today folks oh i'm gonna literally have to just start publicly taking dumps in my trash cans at the curb so the pis <laughs> know exactly what they're in for i'm gonna be like honey bring the step ladder over it's time to go again <laughs> <laughs> um all right let's see i had some other questions but let's let's check some of these super chats here real quick oh by the way yeah if you want to give a big middle finger to david miscavige hit that subscribe button <clears throat> hit that like button um i thanked i thanked uh, lil captain dave in my last video for making sure i never run out of content for my channel right um okay jerry no dean take it as a compliment sptv is getting to them absolutely Absolutely. No question about that. John says, it must be spring. You spotted the first PI of the season. They <laughs> popped up through the dirt. <laughs> um, Mike, you said Miscavige is in town. Is that for the, um, uh, uh, oh, because of the training evolution. You just mean in yeah. town generally, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where he hangs now. He, yeah. He's not going to let go of his next big thing, the uh, OEC FEBC program. Yeah, plus he's got to figure out where the new advanced org is going to go. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, Joe Birchfield, please hit the gritty on the next PI just to mind truck. I don't know what hit the gritty means. Do you? No. Okay. I thought gritty was a reference to the guy in, in Philly, the oh. mascot in Philly. I don't know. That's the Philly fanatic. No, there's another one. I think it's, I think it's the Flyers guy. Oh, Oh. I think his name's Gritty. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe hit the sort Gritty means doing something that 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 Gritty. I, I does. don't know. I'm sure someone will answer in in the comments okay. there. There we go. <clears throat> uh, okay, this is not on topic, but real quick, Mike, did Cob have any redeeming qualities as a man, or was it just an awful across the board? Uh, he's an awful across the board. There he pretends go. to have redeeming qualities, but he doesn't really. 
Yeah. Okay. YouTube user. Oh, well, look, an anonymous comment. I didn't know you could do that. Do they want to see if current church members are still hanging out with you? Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which, Mike, makes me think that in order for them to get that kind of information, though, they couldn't just rely on this middle-aged man keeping his eyeballs peeled every time someone comes up the street. He must be recording all the time. Um. Because that means every time a strange car would pull into my driveway, in order for him to actually get the, the deets on it, he would have to drive by. He was parked. I didn't, he was parked on the other side of the intersection of my block. I, know. He couldn't, I saw he where was, he was. He couldn't, yeah. he didn't. That's not really good eyesight, but he can see if a car pulls up. He can see if someone comes to visit you or if you leave. Yeah. You can't leave without him being able to see that you've left. Totally true. What's really funny these days, though, is that Heather is the one driving my truck half the time. <laughs> 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 because because Beckett takes her car to school. Right. And I know. so and so that's why I speculated. I think their job is to know if I'm home or not, not necessarily to follow me because they don't know who's driving the damn truck. <laughs> right. But I suspect that if you go out in yeah. your truck and they see it's you, they're going to be following you. Interesting. So maybe maybe we should do a little experiment on that. Yeah. Let's talk about that off 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 okay, the show. Cool. Okay, cool. Drew McDonald, who had to lick the bathroom floor and why? <laughs> Mark, Mark Ginga Nelson, who was uh, from CMOCW. And I don't remember why Debbie testified to it in the San Antonio case. Yeah. Okay, Ian Adcock. Aaron, you need magnets to throw on his truck like the shopper cart cop does on his channel. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I should get it, one of those door magnets like I had for my truck when I was running for city council. And the yeah. door magnet should just say Scientology PI. Exactly. Just, right? Exactly. <laughs> those are real. That'd be great videos if I could pull that off. I need to have someone like accompanying me with a GoPro at all times or something. Um, oh, my God. This would be the best video ever. Put on a ghillie suit and hide out in your yard. Yes, I I put on you know ghillie suit is Mike right? No, it's the the suits snipers wear to, to oh yeah with the bushes with leaves and shit hanging yeah. out your head. I'm like army crawling down the street. It, it'll be funny because <laughs> I'll be like not camouflaged at all, like, pretending <laughs> like I am, and, and see how long it takes for for the trucks to drive away. <laughs> yeah, be like I'm sneaking up on him. Oh, good lord. Okay, let's see, Lathanda Gronk Grauklinga. Uh, good thing money paid to PIs is lost for Scientology. That, that I mean, that's another way of looking at it. You're keeping somebody employed, money in someone else's pocket instead of Miscavige's pocket. But anyhow, uh, Kevin, thank you for the super sticker. F. Shopes, why did he run away so fast? I've seen videos of Scientologist PIs act intimidating. See, that that is an interesting question. What's the difference between him fleeing and the other things that we've seen? That's why I said I'm not sure this is a noisy investigation. What's the difference between these two behaviors? Like I said, I think that this guy is worried that his friends are going to see him. Mm. Like, but then I don't know why he wound down the window. I mean, these people aren't the brightest bulbs in the chandelier. They, <laughs> they're not necessarily just because they've got a PI license. Like any, any, anybody can get a PI license. Yeah. You, and you know what sort of a job is it like sitting around <laughs> watching people for hours on and do nothing peeing in a bottle in your car eating junk food all day i mean it's just this is not this is not the uh, cream this is not the cream of society participating in the pi business it's true and then that's not what I intended to click on there, but <laughs> take them on a little drive. Thank you. Thank you for that one. Um, okay. Is he Larry Moe or Curly? Uh, uh, he's not Curly. He's not Curly. You know that? <laughs> no. Uh, Lauren Taylor. Bro has post-it notes on his dash. Are you able to read them? I didn't notice the post-it notes. Uh, let me bring it back on the stream here. So let's... I don't, th those aren't, I don't see post-it notes. I don't, that, that red that, thing over there, that's part I think, of the, that's I think that's just the, his, uh, his, his glove compartment, I think. Yeah, the upholstery of the vehicle, I think. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so money for the first SPTV birdhouse to watch these clowns. Yeah, yeah, I need to install my own birdhouse cameras to keep an eye on these guys. Yep. Um, okay, Andre, sent you an email. Keep up the good work and aggravation you and the SP team are doing. Love the content. Well, thank you so much. Debbie Bruce, you should hire a body double to drive around and then corner them and let them wonder where you really are. I mean, I, I, I wish I had the patience and imagination to really put a lot of thought into how I can screw with these guys. Uh, but it's not, it's not the, like, they're not there all the time. That's the thing. Right. They're not there all the time. Why? I've, that's the other thing. Like I've never been under, uh, understand. Why is it that they only need to know where I am for like a third of the day? I don't quite get it's, it. It's uh, like I said, it's probably when Miscavige has some plan of going somewhere or shifting location or something that that is the time when they're out watching for you so that makes me suspect that these guys either live or have a rented house somewhere close enough to me that whenever they get a call hey <clears throat> we're gonna need to know where aaron is in 15 minutes or whatever like they can't just be leaving their house whenever they get a phone call right they must have a place in the neighborhood <clears throat> they used to have a place over um North of Drew, but on the other side of US 19. You know where that little park is just on the other side of US 19? Like on the east side of US 19, north of Drew, there yes. was a park there. Yes. Just north of that was a house that was the PI staging area back in the day. But I don't know if they're still using that. Because Scientology just rents those places, right? They don't buy, or would yeah, they yeah, that was just a, a rental place that was the sort of HQ. Interesting. <clears throat> oh wow, I got to find out where Scientology PI HQ is now. <laughs> All right, Jay Dice. At least they're wasting money and providing content. That's how I like to look at it. Um, how do you say Eve Perps, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for the super sticker, L. Ron Hubbard. Why did I just do that? <laughs> um, are there any new birdhouses around, Cindy Sue Wonders? Well, I said in my last video, I do suspect that at least one of my nearby neighbors has agreed to cooperate with Scientology, and I'm going to try to develop that story if I can. Uh, <clears throat> Donna Dwyer, put a remote camera in your trash can lid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that would be amazing. With all this scandal that's been rocking Clearwater's trash department, how, how beautiful would it be if they were also selling trash? To right. How does how, how much does Dave pay these jokers? What do you think one of these guys is earning, Mike? Uh, they probably are getting paid, you know, like 25 bucks an hour. The guy that hires them, the head PI, is probably – he's probably on a flat rate. Like the guy that used to be – the Clearwater head of PIs is a guy named Brian Rafferty. Raftery, not Rafferty, Raftery. And he had a, a PI company somewhere here in, in the Bay Area. And he was the go-to guy. And he found all these people and hired them and sort of was responsible for them all. And he made a, he made a, a pretty penny, Brian hmm. Raftery. Salary or hourly? <clears throat> No, monthly retainer. Mm. And probably, I think he was on a monthly retainer and a cost of like if extra guys needed to be hired because extra security or observation was needed or whatever. So what, what, what do you think? 20K a month for that guy? Yeah, maybe in that, in that region. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. Um, Kelly O'Hara says DM. Would you say that Kelly? How do you that's if that's is that Scottish or Irish? How would you say that name? Kelly? Kelly. Kelly. Okay. Yeah. DM needs a little PI, psychiatric introspection. Mm hmm. Uh, Julia Athena, how do you feel about making a list of all OT3s or higher, AKA learned the Xenu story and stuck around? OTs faking it are the reason lower bridge people stick around, deliver an effective blow. Julia, you can essentially. Uh, get, or there already is a list of OT3s and higher on. Um, what is the name of that website? If you guys yeah. just put in anybody's name and just Google someone's name, Scientology. Christy watch, watch to Who's website. that? She's the one that made it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I can't and remember what it's called. So here, I'll actually just do this right now. Um, Mike Rinder, Scientology Service Completions. And it brings me to truthaboutscientology.com. 
is the website that maintains a list of Scientology service completions, truthaboutscientology.com. And yeah, so when people ask me, is such and such person a Scientologist? There's only two things that I do. I go to Facebook and I see how many mutual friends we have in common and whether they're Scientologists. Because because a lot of Scientologists blocked me before they unfriended me. So they still show up as a mutual friend even though they can't see me on Facebook. I still have hundreds of Scientologists on my friends list. So that's the one thing I do. The other thing I do is I just punch in their name into Google and add Scientology service completions. And um, the person that Mike just mentioned has essentially maintained a database of every person who has appeared who has been named as having completed a service in one of Scientology's magazines. It's a pretty complete list. It's not yep. perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Yep. Um, okay, last one here. Shout out to David Miscavige for such fun content. Yes, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Um, SPTV owes it all to you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Well, that's the, that's the chat that I wanted to have. Um, I really, uh, your answer of Miscavige is in town a lot. He needs to know he's not about to be ambushed by you. And you're the only one close enough to the base to do that. That is an answer that rings true because otherwise you and Mark and Claire would have people on you all the time as well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys, if you're watching now, again, if you want to give a big middle finger to David Miscavige, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And Mike, you're going live with Amy Scobie in about, what, 25 minutes on your channel? Yeah, it's at 7.30 Eastern Daylight Time to uh, with an Easter special about Scientology and Christianity. It'll Fantastic. be fun. Awesome, guys. So check that out. Subscribe to Mike Rinder's channel as well. I post a link to his channel below. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching until the very end, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right in right here. If you have six, or not, subscribe right here.